Maybe an unconventional location, but this barber was subject to a robbery in the middle of the day. Unsuspecting, the man is able to walk in unannounced. He begins showing off his weapon, threatening the barber, and has him throw everything of value into a plastic bag. The barber is as compliant as he can be, giving him what looks like his wallet and everything else in sight. Just moments before he makes his escape, the barber makes a grab at him. He grabs something right at the end that maybe the man didn't want to lose. In all, he manages to get away with approximately $30,000 worth of stolen goods and money, running off onto the Bronx streets. I'm not sure if you'd continue your haircut at that point of the day or call it a day. In fact, shut the whole store down at that point, maybe. Not sure I'd be comfortable continuing, not to mention what he might have stolen. If he also stole the client's wallet, could he even pay for a haircut? That would be a brilliant inside job. When you're going home, your defenses might be a little down. This man in particular doesn't seem to know anything is coming. The video opens up as the ring camera catches a man and two women embracing at what is likely the end of their night. Suddenly, from behind the cars, a man comes in. He waves his gun around, threatening them with it as he demands their money, wallet, and more. Nobody seemed to get hurt, and hopefully they could call for help soon after, or at least support after what they'd been through. Some people don't like having surveillance cameras in their home. However, in this case, they caught what a pretty thorough break-in by a few people was, and probably were saved by this footage to begin with. How else could you prove a bunch of men smashed in your door after jumping over a fence? The man who was burglarized had had this happen before, learning from his first experience and covering his property in surveillance. I already had a break-in two months ago. I was already kind of hyper-vigilant about it. The men used a rock, breaking into the house with a rock and spending roughly three minutes stealing from the homeowner. A jewelry box, a laptop, and a few other items later, he's not sure what to do next. It makes you wonder how if they're watching, monitoring, and it's kind of stalking. I don't, I don't know. Clearly this is a pattern of behavior, and even a gated community like this isn't safe. You don't need a weapon if you have a massive truck that works just the same. This liquor store was rammed into by a burglar's Hummer. They broke in, planning to steal an ATM. However, it was bolted into the ground so they had to take less traditional means to make it happen. They smashed into the side again until they believed it was dislodged, using a chain to no avail. However, they were able to break it apart after a few attempts. The suspects got away, along with another burglary soon after. Upon watching security cameras, they found that a second robber made their way into the busted side of the building, then went through the insides. Hopefully the owner's insurance was going to cover it, because as far as losses go, this was a big one. Burglars are sometimes brazen with their axe. These two men felt confident enough, armed with a crowbar, to pop off the window and break into this small residence without even the cover of night. We can see the man begins working off the window frame, careful not to break the window, before stopping himself to just go ahead and make sure no one was watching. Slowly he scans the area, seemingly having heard something, before his accomplice comes up through the side. The two of them work their tools to pop off the window frame, slow and steady. If they move too quickly, they might make too much noise or break the glass altogether. It takes roughly two minutes for them to get the window pride open enough to make their way into the building. In a smooth movement, the burglar hoists themselves up and through the window. Imagine being the neighbors at home when all of this is happening, but chances are no one even caught on. It was so quiet, so smooth, they probably would have gotten away with it. When the FBI gets involved, you know it's bad. This bank robbery in Coral Springs was bold and dangerous for everyone involved. The camera catches two men in the middle of a textbook operation. They move quickly, with no hesitation, as they run into the bank. One man jumps over the counter, then allows the other man in. There was enough time for them to make it in, but the credit union employee couldn't react quickly enough. She's rushed in by her assailant. They take enough money to clear out the vault and then run out. They get away, dumping one car, only to quickly switch and go to their real car, which was also caught on CCTV. These guys had the plan from the beginning to get to the vault, and usually that uh, uses a little bit more violence. There were some, some threatening words said. These men likely stole enough money to just hunker down and lay low, and are being accused of orchestrating a string of robberies of the likes the FBI agents haven't seen before. Unlike a lot of the ones in today's video, these men were like in the movies. It's terrifying to know that they might have gotten away with it. Of course, someone has to work at the bank, but it would be terrifying as far as workplaces go. With the amount of money these people handle, it's surprising these crimes don't happen more often. The woman in the video shows what looks like to be a young woman who calmly approaches a Comerica bank. She walks up to the bulletproof glass with a piece of paper, which demanded money or else. She claimed to be armed with a bomb and slowly left on foot after. The whole situation was done and dealt with in just a matter of minutes. 
Whether she was actually armed with a bomb or not, the teller's actions quickly diffused the situation and nobody was in danger, so to speak. They have to handle things based on what their company protocol is, and so she did what she was trained to do and handled it appropriate. Um, and because she did that, then there was not any threat to any other customers inside the location. It really goes to show that you can be threatening without saying a single word, and sometimes even if you look like a teenager like this woman did. The bank offered a $200,000 reward to catch this criminal, but she did well enough to get away without too much notice. Sometimes he and I can take a sharp turn in the middle of things. This happens a lot at fast food places. A man walks in in his white hoodie and begins a transaction with the cashier. Once the register is open, the McDonald's cashier is surprised as the assailant waves his knife at him, pointing it directly at the cashier. As all fast food employees are taught, your till is not worth your life. The employee backs up, allowing the suspect to reach forward, over the counter, and remove all the money from the cash drawer. A second employee comes up right as the suspect darts back through the exit, dropping money on his way out. At most, we're looking at about $1 to $200 in the cash drawer, but the skill and speed he enacted his heist makes it probably worth his effort. It might not be a lot of money, but he got in and got right back out just as quickly. What do you think is worth it for what's essentially chump change? Burglaries don't always happen in the dead of night. Sometimes it's at the crack of dawn. At just 2 in the morning, the CCTV camera caught the actions of a burglary right as they scoped out his location. He walks up to a house, reading a banner, slowly ensuring he's all clear. He then circles around the location, finds an entry point, but is quickly joined by a second set of people. The robber makes his way into the catering box, stealing what he can, which was to say, not very much. He steals about 50 euros, which doesn't seem worth all the trouble. These men really thought that they'd gotten away with their heist. In the dead of night, they hooked up their truck to an ATM and used the car to bust it open. It worked, but only for a while. As the men escaped the scene of the crime, they likely had no clue that they were being recorded and documented and would soon be hauled off to be held accountable. The rest of the clip is the resulting fallout of that behavior, the near-immediate arrest by quick-acting police officers from Orange County. There isn't much to this clip, except for their arrest, but it just goes to show that even when you think you're getting out scot-free, you can't account for everything. Those little mirrors in front of the ATM are definitely for your safety. Honestly, whether in the middle of the night or the light of day, you need to stay aware of your surroundings and be prepared. When the armed assailant approached him, the 57-year-old man didn't see it coming. With a gun pointed at your back, would you act any differently? The chilling surveillance video catches the incident as the man in the black hoodie rounds up behind the unsuspecting victim, right as he puts his card into the ATM. You can see the gunman dictating just how much money he needs to take out and give him. All of this could have been avoided if he'd just been aware of what was going on behind him. What do you think? Could this have been avoided, or would it have been too late already? Small businesses are always at risk of a robbery, especially ones that deal in cash. This laundromat is no exception in its location in South Memphis. Two men make their way quickly into this Ojoy laundromat, armed as they rush into the place. There was only one person on shift that night, as two men covered from head to toe came rushing into the location with their guns drawn. One of them seemed to be packing serious heat. A rifle, of all things. The actual clip is short, but you can only imagine the terror of knowing your shift is not going to go quite as you planned. In fact, this would be a truly excellent reason to go ahead and find yourself a new job. At least most people might consider it at this point. Some of the most terrifying crimes are handled calmly and without emotion. The robbers in this situation make their way into the house without issue, covered from head to toe. They slowly move into the living room, not aware that they're being filmed. Calmly, they begin discussing what they plan on stealing. There's a method to it. Nothing too big, only things they can pick up and walk out without issue. They make a second round on their way in, coming back for more stuff. The sterile way they make their way through the house, their practice movements, it's unclear whether these men have done this before, but it's hard to imagine it's a first-time job. This is a good, clear instance where they not only should have properly locked up before closing down for the night, but maybe an alarm? Either way, this house wasn't protected, and as people are known to do, someone found a way to take advantage of it. In this case, these men knew what they were doing, and more importantly, how to do it right. Armored vehicles are both uniquely protected and vulnerable, because on the one hand, the drivers are often doubled up and armed. On the other hand, however, they cover quite a bit of distance with quite a bit of money. This clip captures the moments where a bunch of men pile out of their cars with massive machine guns, waiting for the car to be unlocked so they can pile in and steal everything. They move very quickly, and very much ready when things need to move. 
The driver, a mother of three, was pushing a cart filled with money from the bank. With her hands in the air, she was forced on her knees as the other two men helped themselves to over $100,000 from the truck. The whole situation garnered a lot of attention, all the way up to the FBI. This Colorado driver was fired after the incident, as there's usually fail-safes in play to keep things from happening that clearly did fail. Imagine looking out the window of your room, only to see a bomb going off. This insane robbery took place in just a few minutes, with some explosive results. In the dead of night, this crew, covered nearly head to toe, sets up their explosives around the ATM. They stand around for just a few moments from a safe distance, and you suddenly see the corridor light up. The explosives go off and the men mobilize. It's all very smooth in practice, like these men are professionals. The men swarm into the blast zone and quickly run out. This might seem like an extreme, but it certainly did work. Effortless, almost, in a truly terrifying sort of way. How would you respond if you knew this was going on? Call the police or keep your head real, real low. One is valiant while the other is way safer. While watching TV alone one night, a man heard a sound come from the entrance to his front door. He checked the security cameras from his phone and saw four masked men entering his home. I heard some thumping and stuff going on and I thought maybe a raccoon or something was uh, in my house. So I checked the security cameras and my dogs were barking and I was watching TV. It was very evident that someone was home. And I looked on the security camera and there happened to be one guy with a mask on sticking his head in my door and putting carpet in the door to keep it open. The resident ran to the bathroom to hide from the police. While hiding, he quietly called them. They stayed with me on the phone and um, they sent um, uh, a bunch of police, but these guys were in my house for seven to 10 minutes. They completely ripped that part of, that part of the house apart, as well as what's in the garage. They, they ripped the laundry room apart. It took seven to 10 minutes for the police to arrive, and during that time, the four masked burglars ransacked the man's house. Finally, when he knew that the police were close, he came out of the bathroom. The burglar saw him and sprinted out of the house in fear. I stuck my head out of the bathroom through my living room. They saw me and then they came flying out the door. Luckily, they didn't steal much from the resident. However, his house was a complete mess. Almost every drawer and cupboard had its contents emptied out onto the floor. Because the man had let the burglars walk around his home for so long, he had a lot of footage to turn into the police. The police were able to identify two of the burglars and promptly arrested them, not only for this robbery, but also for a string of robberies throughout the area. In this video, taken from a doorbell camera, a man approaches a house in the middle of the night. It's terrifying video. A man attempts to break into a home in the middle of the night. He peers into the window and tries the door handle, but the home is locked. The home is owned by a couple, but the husband is away on a work trip. The moment of fear was when he was ringing the doorbell because I didn't know what was gonna happen after that. The wife is inside all by herself, watching the man through the doorbell security feed on her phone. The man tries to remove the doorbell camera from off the wall, but has no luck. He then rings the doorbell. Out of fear of him breaking in through the window, the woman engages with the man. Doorbell rang that the next move was gonna be the glass breaking on the door, so I knew I had to answer the ring. She asks who it is through the camera, and the man responds, but his words slur, and it's impossible to understand his reply. You who is it? Um, this is a little girl. Who? A little girl. She then says sorry to him, hoping he'll leave. The man says, don't be sorry, it's alright. Then he walks away. Sorry. Don't be sorry. It's alright. When the police arrive, they tell the resident of the home that they're unable to make an arrest because he didn't break in. The homeowner was angry and insisted that they do something because the man had a weapon, but the police say that they can't. You have a knife. That was a metal bar, right, exactly. There's certain elements that we need to meet for a crime to take him in. Um, and unfortunately, what he did does not meet the elements. Unfortunately, because the police didn't arrest him, the man broke into another home that same night, except this time it was far more creepy. Before breaking in, the man stripped down and was completely naked as he climbed in through the window of the room of 12-year-old twins. After that incident, police did arrest the man who was still completely naked. When Daniel Chiryong came home one day, he felt something was different about his house, so he decided to check his home security cameras. I only noticed that something was amiss when I came home. As he had suspected, someone had broken in while he and his wife were away. Unusual, to say the least, and so I asked my wife, and um, she was like, well, maybe you should check the cameras. Daniel had security cameras set up all around the outside of his home, as well as some inside. 
In the security footage, a man tries to get in through the front and back door of Daniel's home, but both are locked. The man then jumps up on the balcony and climbs up the balcony door that leads to the upstairs bedroom, which was unlocked. I was angry. You know, I was very angry about the whole thing. The man went through the entire home, leaving with a backpack full of valuables. After reviewing the footage, Daniel realized that he recognized the man. This guy actually came to our house unsolicited, initially offering to rake our leaves. Turns out he was probably casing our house at that time. Earlier that week, the man had stopped by their home to offer his leaf raking services. Daniel realized that he had probably cased their home days before the burglary. It's unsettling in that, like, I feel a little uncomfortable, you know, going for a run or, you know, leaving the house. I don't know what I would do to the guy if I see him, you know? I, you know, I feel like I was violent. A homeowner came home to find that over $2,000 worth of designer clothes, jewelry, and bags had been stolen. I went straight to my jewelry box and, I mean, it was gone. A couple of purses, gone, perfumes. A couple of days after, I started noticing that some of my clothes were gone too. When she checked her doorbell security camera footage, she was shocked at what she saw. The burglar, a young woman, approached her front door and rang the doorbell, looking straight into the camera. She's knocking on my door. She then gets a text and walks to the side of the house, out of view from the line of sight of the camera. And she received a text message. The woman broke in through the back door and stole all the valuables. And then she walks out to the driveway, looked, you know, both ways, and then walked through the um, side. The shocking thing about her appearance, however, was that she was wearing a casual tube top. Probably she came with someone that probably knows, you know, my house or something. While other burglars try to hide their appearance by wearing hoodies and face masks, this burglar was comfortable enough to wear regular street clothes and no attempt to hide her identity. Because of this, police were able to locate her fairly quickly. While having your home robbed is scary. Being home while you're being robbed is far more terrifying. The fact that somebody has come into my, my space and taken my stuff while I'm here, how brazen is that? In this video, a man breaks into a family's home. He goes through all the rooms in the house, taking valuables from each one. Makes me wonder, what if that, what if that guy's come here before? The entire time he's in the home, the family is sleeping soundly in their beds. The man spends a lot of time in the home, going as far as to open the fridge and eat. The family didn't even realize that there'd been an intruder in the home until they checked the security cameras the next morning. The creepiest thing about the video is that the man stole a watch from the bedside table of the homeowners. He was merely feet away from them while they were sleeping. I 100% feel violated. A homeowner went away to visit family for the Christmas holiday, but before leaving, he had received a flower from a friend that was supposed to bloom on Christmas Eve. So I was on my dad's front porch in Mississippi, and I was like, oh, let's see if that flower bloomed. You know, it's supposed to bloom on Christmas, it's Christmas Eve, let's check it. When the day rolled around, the man checked his home security cameras to see if the flower had bloomed. Uh-oh. I'm like, what's going on? Look at this guy. Instead, he saw an unknown man inside of his home. Your heart sinks, and it's like, <gasps> What's happening? He called the police, but they told him that there was nothing they could do. There's a stranger in my house. Like, has he come in before? Has he come in while I was sleeping and I just didn't hear him? All the homeowner could do was watch his home be burglarized. Taking sentimental items from my house is just, I don't know the word for it. Heart wrenching, gut wrenching. The thief didn't enter or exit through the front door, meaning that he came in through the upstairs balcony. And there was never an entrance and there was never an exit from those doors. So he had to have come in and out of the balcony on the second floor. He didn't take anything of monetary value, but stole a lot of sentimental items like the man's class ring. I don't feel safe anymore. I don't feel secure. The burglar looked right into the security camera, but police have still not been able to locate him. Yeah, I feel bad for the guy for not having family that wants to bring him in on Christmas Eve. Who knows, everybody has their own challenges in life, but it's not an excuse to steal from someone. Employees came to work one morning to find that their business had been broken into. When they reviewed the security footage, they saw a man break through the window with a large piece of plywood, then he crawled in. He checked the cash register, but it was empty. There was a jar of tips on the counter, but the man didn't take it. He went through the whole store, but took nothing except some car keys. Despite taking the car keys, the man didn't steal the car they belonged to. He seems to have gone through a lot of trouble to break into the business just to walk out empty-handed. In this video, a man attempts to break into a business in the middle of the night. This is the moment there was an attempted burglary on a grocery store in North California. He walks up to the storefront and peeks in through the front windows. He's a rather large man and appears to be dressed in his pajamas. After peering through the windows, he steps away out of sight of the security cameras. The man then returns with a sack on his head and a rock in his hand. He throws the rock at the window. The window cracks but doesn't break all the way. In fear, the man turns to run away. However, he doesn't see the parking curb because of the sack over his head. He trips over the curb and falls flat on his face. He picks himself up and continues to run away. 
If your house was being fumigated for bugs, the last thing you'd worry about would be a burglary. However, unfortunately for these homeowners, that's exactly what happened. Police are searching for this burglar seen on camera stealing property from inside a Costa Mesa home. From a security video camera located in their closet, homeowners watched as a man stole $4,000 worth of their belongings. He was completely covered from head to toe, making it hard to identify him. Because their house was being fumigated, homeowners didn't even realize they'd been robbed until after they were able to return. Police are still looking to find the burglar. In this video, a man spent 10 minutes walking through a couple's machine shop before stealing an expensive bag of tools and leaving. I'm still shaking. I mean, pretty, uh, invading, you know. The man looks directly at the camera monitor, but seems to think that he's not being filmed, so he takes his time looking through all their drawers and boxes for the most valuable things. Then it looks like he looked up at another monitor and thought he wasn't on camera and just to, proceeded to run around for about 10 minutes. The couple was sleeping soundly just feet away during the burglary. To know that somebody was all over my home while I was just sleeping right there. Because they're building a home nearby, the couple sleeps in a camper trailer inside their machine shop. It's chilling to think that somebody was inside your home which it is our home. The man didn't break into their trailer, but stole items just right outside of it. He was hitting multiple places, kind of just going through this area, just seeing what he could find. The couple was unnerved that someone had come so close to them in their sleep. L real scary, real scary, and loved to catch him and, and put him where he belongs. However, they weren't the only ones who were robbed that night. The same man had broken into a neighbor's garage and stolen their Jeep. Police were able to find the man and arrest him. Don't like thieves don't like thieves. I've worked hard for everything we have. He's worked hard. We've worked hard for everything. While at work, Stephanie George received an alert from her home security app. When she opened the app, she watched as a man walked out of her bedroom. This is the, the, the very first video. Coming through my bedroom door. He had broken into her home through her bedroom window. She called the police immediately. Then she spoke through the camera on the app. Hello. I was talking. I'm like, hello. And he looked around like, Whoa, what was that? The man heard her and looked around, but when he saw that no one was in the apartment, he continued to fill a box full of her things. So by the time I got here, there was about three or four cops already here. By the time Stephanie and the police got there, the robber was already gone. Even the police told me that I did my due diligence more than a lot of other people. I have a camera. He'd stolen a lot of valuables, but the most shocking thing about the event was that he continued to rob Stephanie, even though he knew that she was watching him on the camera. My laptop, clothes, shoes, purses, perfumes, I mean, anything that he could sell. Joy Upchurch returned home with her children and saw that a lot of the items in her home had been moved around. Our bedroom drawers were pulled out and stuff was strewn across the bed. She called her husband and asked if he tried to reorganize the home. When he said that he hadn't, Joy checked the security cameras. It was so creepy seeing a stranger walk through our house and touch our stuff. The security cameras showed that an unknown man had entered their home. He looked through these drawers here. They watched him steal an Apple Watch, iPad, and a few other technologies. The kids were scared, and that, of course, hurts my heart more than anything else. And the things that he took aren't important but he did steal some peace from us. The scariest part about the robbery, however, was that the man had only left the Upchurch's house eight minutes before they arrived home. In and out in eight minutes, and eight minutes later, me and the kids pulled up in the driveway and came into the house. Joyce said she was glad that she and her children had missed him because there's no telling what he would have done to her and her kids. When Brian Anton was asked by News Station to cover a story about holiday crimes, he hardly expected to find himself in the middle of one. While he was at a Home Depot purchasing a new microwave, he watched as a man walked out of the store with an electrical tool without paying. Did he just steal it? Employees followed the man out of the store, chasing him into the parking lot. Brian followed the robber as well and took video so that he could add it to his story. Did you just steal that? You just stole that? Brian followed the man all the way out to the truck where the man placed the tool in the bed and then took off running. Were you just walking out with that? There was another man in the truck who tried to drive away with the tool, but employees and Brian were able to stop him. It's in the back. Oh, he's, he's in there. He's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, the story had a happy ending, and Brian was able to get some great material for his story. In this video, a man breaks in through the front door in broad daylight. 
How he does it is very disturbing. First at six, a violent break and caught on camera. A man busts through a front door to get inside. Police say he's responsible for a series of home break-ins. The man takes two rocks and throws them at the window on the front door. When the window breaks, the man runs and jumps through the window, <laughs> kicking out the rest of the glass. The man's only wearing a pair of basketball shorts, no shirt or even shoes. Breaking in through a glass window in that outfit must have resulted in a lot of cuts on his part, but it didn't slow him down. He gets into the house, grabs some items, and runs out. The video is from only one of the five houses he burglarized that day. Because he'd hit so many houses, the neighborhood was on high alert and were able to help the police track the man down. And then I yelled and then he jumped the fence and then he started his escapades down the neighborhood. The police were able to find and arrest him. No one wants to deal with the guard dog, right? But what if I told you that a massive loyal dog helped put a burglar behind bars? One bright and sunny afternoon, a gentleman enters their home, unwavering and confident in his actions. He doesn't stop to ensure anyone's around. He simply walks up and acts like he owns the place. Dubai, a massive 122-pound Great Dane, greets him with a friendly bark and prowls around him, seemingly satiated by the man's social advances. Little did the intruder know that the loyal dog was just waiting for a cue from his owner to attack. The dog springs into action like a superhero as the owner catches the man and screams. He goes after the burglar, biting and even going for his face. The man's escape was hasty and messy as he tried his best to escape the attacking Great Dane. The intruder never expected the dog to turn on him, but with one cue from his owner, the loyal dog knew something was wrong. The footage of the attack helped track down the burglar who was later convicted of second degree burglary. It's all thanks to one massive freakout by man's best friend. They say confession is good for the soul, but in the case of an Australian man who committed a crime, his moment of penance turned into a full-blown meltdown that left a news crew reeling. I just say that she's all right. It all started when the man flagged down a news crew, eager to spill the beans on his criminal activities. The cameraman caught his full confession on tape, but the man wasn't quite finished with his spree. As the cameraman looked on in shock, the man stole his van, brandishing a gun and making a wild getaway. The cameraman captured it all, but the man's joyride was short-lived. In a fit of rage or just plain insanity, the carjacker lost control of the vehicle and crashed it into a sign, ending his escape plan. He was soon caught and taken into custody, leaving the news crew without a car and a wild story to tell. But what drove this man to such extremes? Was it just a maniac bender or something else? No one knows for sure, but one thing's certain. If you're already committing one crime, it's probably best to skip the confession and the additional carjacking if possible. Have you ever been in the kind of situation that forces you to act fast to possibly even save your life? It's a skill that's not easy to come by and could make all the difference in the world. But when the stakes are high and the clock is ticking, can you trust yourself to make the right decision? As these people pulled up to their gated home in South Africa, known for gnarly carjackings, they noticed a car had pulled up behind them. Instinctively, they knew something wasn't right. They could have ignored it and hoped for the best, but instead they decided to zoom off. As they sped away, they saw their would-be attackers standing there, unsure how to continue. They had underestimated the quick thinking and bravery of their intended victims. This couple had just avoided falling prey to mugging, carjacking, or worse. It's a perfect example of the power of quick thinking. In those critical moments, every second counts. Your reaction time could be the difference between life and death. Working at a McDonald's is no easy feat. You deal with all sorts of things. However, sometimes your life could be on the line too. It happened at this Manchester McDonald's in 2014, and it was a scene straight out of an action movie. Armed attackers stormed into the restaurant, moving so swiftly that it felt like a blur. Before anyone knew it, the registers were emptied. Workers were herded into the back room, and the attackers were brandishing their weapons to keep everyone in line as they did their work. The manager was forced to hand over any remaining cash, and then the attackers were gone in a flash. It was a surreal experience, and it's no wonder some workers never return to work. But this isn't just a cautionary tale. It's a reminder that fast food workers deal with more than just burgers and fries. In fact, your local McDonald's might be more dangerous than your local police station. In fact, much like the last video, this organized group makes their way right into this McDonald's. However, this time, it wasn't just service workers in danger. This McDonald's was seemingly full of patrons just looking to get their food. That doesn't take long to change. The customers file out just as quickly as the robbers come in. Would you want to stick around? The clip shows the dangerous situation unfolding in the back as workers are all herded once more and the manager is forced to relinquish the money in the safe. 
No one fights back. Why would they? No service job is worth your life, and these service workers have likely been trained to give up anything a robber asks for. Once they got everything, the robber ran to check the back door, jumping over the trash and out to freedom. A traumatic event for everyone involved, but no one was hurt, and that's the best anyone can ask for. Imagine a bustling, well-lit area with people milling about enjoying their evening. If this was you and you were there, you'd never think that this would be the moment you're going to be ambushed, would you? But that's exactly what happened to a group of San Francisco night owls who were up for a big surprise. Most victims played along, hands up and huddled up against the building. After all, it's best to comply in these situations. You never want to be the guy ready to fight, only to realize you're outmatched. However, one man in a yellow shirt has other ideas. Adrenaline takes over and he fights back to take control. I could only imagine adrenaline just taking over him there. His bravery pays off as he manages to get away from the scene. But for other victims, fear sets in. They raise their arms and get out of the way. No one needs to be shot. One shot rings off after an assailant warns them, leaving holes in a nearby garage in a community shaken by violence. My kids have to leave the city because it's just been, oh, really? well, they don't want to raise kids in a place that's so scary, right? Justice came swiftly for these criminals. The getaway car was caught at another location just minutes from the crime scene. Unfortunately, most of them were underage, one ringleader and two teens following his lead. The situation has a good ending, criminals behind bars, but many others do not. It, it is horrifying what's happening in San Francisco. The scary part is just how many other cases aren't so neatly tied up, and how many others are in danger. Upscale fancy storefronts are always in danger of some sort of attack. One effective heist and they can get away with thousands of dollars in merchandise. This Louis Vuitton in Kenwood Town Center in Cincinnati was one such hit. I need multiple units of how to our uh, Louis Vuitton. We have a large group of people working in and stealing items. One store virtually cleared out in a single sweep. The crime is quick, as these things often are. Fifteen men or so pile into the Louis Vuitton in Kenwood Mall with their faces covered in ski masks. Soon after it begins, the 911 calls start piling in, one after another telling officers of what they were seeing. As soon as we started walking back, they all ran in there and they started grabbing sh knocking stuff over and then ran out. And as soon as we had our backs turned... Like the McDonald's workers we discussed, no one fights back. The goods can be insured, but no one's life is worth saving a single purse. Just as quickly as the witnesses caught the robbery, the men filed out, escaping with nearly half a million dollars in stolen goods. Working the graveyard shift at a convenience store can be a task in and of itself. Imagine dealing with drunk, tired, and restless patrons all night long. But the night shift was about to get much more enjoyable for one convenience store in Kingwood, Texas. As the clock ticked past midnight, a group of men walked into the store, their presence immediately sending shivers down the spines of an employee behind the counter. These weren't your typical customers. They were armed with tools and had a plan in place. Without wasting any time, the trio quickly went to work. One man stationed himself behind the counter, quickly emptying the cash register while the helpless employee was a little too slow on the upkeep. The other two moved towards the ATM machine, ready to smash it open and grab the cash box. It was a scene that seemed straight out of a Hollywood movie. But this was no story, not a work of fiction. This happened in real life and the employee could only watch in horror as the heist unfolded. As the men made their quick escape, the employee mustered up the courage to give chase. But it was too late. The robbers had already disappeared into the night, leaving the employee to pick up the pieces and call the authorities. Picture this. You're sitting on your couch sipping on a cup of tea when you receive a notification on your phone. The doorbell camera shows you two mysterious figures approaching your front door. You can't help but feel a sense of unease wash over you as you watch them knock repeatedly and aggressively, their faces hidden behind masks. These guys mean business. They're up to no good and they're armed. One has a gun tucked away in his jacket pocket while the other is wielding brass knuckles and a tire iron. The intruders keep knocking, shouting for the resident to come out. Suddenly something miraculous happens. The intruders become spooked by the lack of response and decide to run for it. Thanks to the carefully placed doorbell camera, the homeowners are safe. It's a scary thought to think about what could have happened if the family wasn't prepared, but this is the reality we live in. Crime can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. The last thing they expected this night was to be caught in a dangerous situation, much less a full-blown robbery. But here you are. Walking into a liquor store, imagine it's you. You notice a twitchy gunman, visibly nervous. As we see in the clip, he shows off his gun and pulls out the magazine, making sure everyone involved knows that it's loaded. Maybe it's his first time. Perhaps he doesn't feel very confident. The truth is, the last thing anyone wants is to be on the other end of an insecure gunman. You can never be sure how it's going to end. 
This is one of those moments you only see on TV, but this time there's no superhero waiting to save the day. There's only this man, the cashier, and an adrenaline rush no one involved will likely forget. The truth is this can happen anywhere, to anyone. You never know what's waiting, even if you're just running to grab a drink from the corner store. 